Hi everybody, happy Monday. Super excited to be here with you guys today as we're sewing up the last block in the Swing on a Star Sew Along. It's not our last week, but it is our last block. And now after this week, we get to start putting everything together. So that's super exciting. And also I love this block <laughs> and it sounds kind of prideful for me to say, but I don't mean it that way. I just really love big blocks. Um, which makes me think of that song, but I'm not gonna sing it for you. <laughs> you can all thank me now. Um, so I, um, I like oversized blocks. I think they're so fun. They are, you know, there's more elements to them. So you have to kind of be mindful of how you're putting things together, but you can do so much with these big blocks. And I think they add a lot of fun to a quilt, like a big oversized block. I think I want to write a whole book someday of giant, like quilts made up of big blocks. <laughs> you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I think it's a good idea. So um, when you get on, say, hey, I would love to see who's here. If you are um, watching on Facebook or on YouTube, welcome. I'm super excited to have everybody here. Um, it's just super fun. Uh, Facebook scared me a little bit this afternoon because I was getting ready to set up and they changed the whole like behind the scenes setup for live. So that was awesome. I was like, oh, great. I was half expecting it to not work, but it appears that it's working because people are um, saying, hey, so, so yay. Um, so I want to say hi to some people. We've got, yes, Valeria. <laughs> she, she said the, the lines, I like big blocks and I can't lie. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, she's over on YouTube. That's super fun. Um, Anita and Dolores are also on YouTube. Anita, you're in North Lake, Tennessee. I don't know if I knew that. Did I know that? Are you? <laughs> that's so fun. Where's Norris Lake? I'm near Nashville. So, and I'm really not familiar with anything that's not in my like bubble of, of lo location. Um, so I would love to, that sounds like it's a super pretty place. Oh, let's see who's on Facebook. So we have uh, Valerie is over on Facebook. It's windy in Tucson and rain. Oh my gosh, you might get monsoons finally. That's super exciting. It's kind of, so Arizona has like the monsoons where the dust storms blow in and the thunderstorms and stuff like that. And so I, um, I feel like we kind of have that in Tennessee in the summer as well. We get these like late afternoon thunderstorms that always reminds me of Arizona's monsoons. Um, I love it. It's so fun. The we cool down after a monsoon and you guys don't. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> um, let's see, Wendy's here, hot and humid. Uh, Rosemary's here. Yay. Thanks for tuning in, Rosemary. Cynthia's here. Uh, Dawn, Wendy. Um, oh, uh, no, I don't know how to say your name. Gerdian? Gerdine? You'll have to tell me how to pronounce your name. She's here from Holland. That's super fun. Dina's here. Hey, Dina. Um, Allison from Windy and Hot Arizona. Sorry, Allison. That's not fun. Stephanie's here. Hey. And Shirley's here. Oh, you're vacationing, Shirley. That's super fun. And Dawn is here, Lisa. Oh, we have so many friends today. Hey, Teresa. You're from Lawton. We've got flooding. Oh my goodness, be careful, Teresa. And Anita answered me on YouTube um, and she said, Norse Lake is east of Knoxville. That's awesome. Um, we lived near Knoxville. We lived in Lenore City for a year and loved it over there just didn't work out to be in the Eastern time zone. So that's why we're over here, but it's so beautiful over there. That's so fun. And Marie's here from the Keys. That's so great. Yay. We have so many people here today. Super fun. Darlene's here from Gal Galveston. It's raining there. Oh, that's awesome. I'm ready for some rain. It's, so we've got thunderstorms coming in. So I'm hoping this afternoon it kind of hits. Um, though we are supposed to, I'm untying my bow, sorry. Um, we are supposed to maybe get our well dug this week. So if you are new to me, um, we are in the process of um, building a house, which is in the process, meaning like hardly even started at all. <laughs> but um, we are supposed to be getting a well here in the next week or two. And I think because it's raining, we probably won't get a well So <laughs> this week. So I kind of want it to rain and I kind of don't want it to rain. So that's my little drama. <laughs> Hey Ginger, welcome. She's over on YouTube. So fun. Super excited that you guys are here. Okay. Oh, Etta Kay is in San Antonio. Welcome. 
So we have fun things, you guys. We are making the um, large patchwork star block. So, and I think I have it sideways. Nope. Um, I'm probably the only one that knows whether or not this is right sides up or not, but <laughs> I do. So this is our large patchwork star block. It's um, a nice big block. It comes in at 24 and a half inches unfinished. And it's made just like our small patchwork star block, except that it's big. <laughs> so um, the small patchwork star block that we made before is right back here. And it has just the little triangles in the corners. Whereas, because our corners on this one are so much bigger, we put a whole shoe fly block in there. And then it's made up of all the little patchwork squares and a center um, square. So if you are sewing along with the kit, now is where you can really kind of make this your own because you'll be able to see how much you have left of each fat quarter. Um, probably several of them, there's a good amount of. So feel free to change up your blocks if you would like to as far as the center. Um, and if you have enough, you could even change up your um, the little shoe fly blocks in the corners. But um, you do need to keep your large points of your star the same but feel free to change those up you can make your um, patchwork pieces any any um, prints that you like you can make your center square any print that you like so have fun with that definitely you know use up what you would like you just need to save if you're using the kit you need to save that blue main print um, just for the stars and you're going to use that for your border as well and then you have in that kit that gold um, butterscotch uh, sparkle print. And on in the kits, that's what we're using for binding. So you can, you'll have a little bit of that for um, blocks and things like that, but you do wanna save enough of that for your binding. So other than that, go crazy and have fun with that. So that's what we're going to sew through here in just a few minutes, but we should do giveaways first because giveaways are the best. So, hey Rebecca. Yeah, it is a big block, Valeria. <laughs> big enough to be, Allison says it's big enough to be its own mini quilt, wall hanging, table topper, or puppy quilt. <laughs> that is very true, Allison. You could definitely do that. It would be a really fun pillow. In fact, it's a great idea to do, um, if you wanted to make up an extra one, um, you could um, make a coordinating pillow to go with your quilt. And I think that would be really pretty. Um, Dawn says she would love to see house progress um, photos fixing up your 1920 house. That's so fun, Don. As soon as I have something to show, I would be happy to show you guys. <laughs> so uh, before we do giveaways, I am going to go over our schedule here just so you can um, have a, an idea of what we're doing. So this is our quilt. We are working on the large um, patchwork stars that are on the top right corner and the bottom left corner. So that's today, and then you'll see that next week we are going to start assembling our quilt top, and then on the 12th we are going to um, go ahead and add our borders. So we only have, after this week, two weeks left, um, but that, uh, you'll have plenty of time to catch up if you are running a little bit late and you wanna stay and kinda of finish up with everybody else, that'll give you a little bit of time to catch up or you know you can finish whenever you would like there's no time limit these videos will stay accessible for you on in, in the Facebook group or on YouTube whether you want to finish now or in three years from now so no pressure or anything like that um, so we are going to start with our giveaways last week um, the prize was a sew sampler box and it includes everything in the sampler box. So I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what was in the giveaway box. So this box includes a little honey bun of, um, the fabric is, uh, it's called, sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head. And it's over here. <laughs> no, it's not, what is it? Oh, okay. It's called Cider Honey, and it's by Basic, Basic Gray for Moda. So a honey bun is one and a half inch strips cut by the width of your fabric, which is 22 inches, instead of like a jelly roll is two and a half inch strips. So it's one inch less, but you can still do a ton of cute projects with a 
um, honey bun. So it's a whole honey bun and there's a couple cute notions in here as well. There is a um, Magic Touch cutting mat cleaner, which I need to do, I will confess. There are some heat resistant cool pins. So you can press and you can, you know, um, uh, put all your blocks in place and you don't have to worry about your uh, pins melting. And then there are um, some sew tight magnetic sewing pins. So these are really great if you're working with a fabric that you don't want to pin through like leather or vinyl or something like that. Or if it's just kind of a bulky thing, you can use this instead of a regular pin. And it comes with a quilt pattern to make up a really cute table runner with the honey bun if you would like to do that. But you certainly don't have to. You can use your little honey bun for anything you would like. So, and I'm just going to, um, this was the one that I bought for January, but I'm going to box up all of this for our winner and just mail it out like this. <laughs> and our winner um, is Jamers B. That's her um, name, his or her name over on YouTube. So um, I will be uh, messaging you and hopefully get your mailing address. If you are watching, you can send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com and give me your mailing address and I will get this out in the mail to you. So, and if you enter the week's giveaway, please check the following week to see if you won. We've had a few things that have gone unclaimed um, and after a couple weeks, we are going, I'm just going to roll them back into the prize kitty. <laughs> so I, I do my best to contact, I tag, I, I message people, but um, if you don't get a hold of me, then it's going to go back in the mix. <laughs> so, um, okay, so this week, that sounded mean. I didn't mean it to. I just mean like if you guys could help me out by checking to see if you won. <laughs> okay, so this week our prize is really fun. I have three little charm packs for you of a collection for Riley Blake called Tea with B. This is out in stores right now. I think that it shipped last month. I think. Um, I would have to check on that. But I sh you should be able to get coordinating fabrics if you want. But it is a darling collection. It is by Catherine... Um, can't pronounce her last name and it is very small on here so you're gonna have to just bear with me on that but you can see the colors in the collection there's um, florals there's some really pretty um, all sorts of different kinds of florals there's a little um, hexagon print that almost looks like chicken wire super cute a tile print and then there is a teacup print which I don't think you guys can see but when we switch to our other camera I will show you it's so cute you guys you will love it. So it's called Tea with B, and it is, I have three charm packs for you. And then because um, this takes three charm packs, I thought I would donate my uh, Tea Rose quilt pattern. This one is really fun and fast to make. You would, if you want to make it up with Tea with B, you would just need a little bit of extra fabric for the centers of your blocks, and then the corners of your sashing right down here, and then a border fabric. But there are so many great prints in this collection and the colors are really pretty that you could even use something from your stash to coordinate or if you wanted to pick up more Tea with B, you could find it at stores. So my um, Tea Rose quilt pattern and then I also have this diagonal seam tape from Cluck Cluck Sew. So this makes it really easy to do a quarter inch seam. It, it, it's a, like a washi tape. So you put it on your machine and then you can just use that as a guide for your quarter inch and it so it marks the center of your where your seam is in the red and then there's quarter inch guides on both sides and then if it starts to kind of wear off you can just pull it off of your machine and um, put another piece on so this is super handy stuff so that's this week's prize and it's super easy to enter my giveaways all you have to do is leave a comment and you can do that uh, whether you're watching live and whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. I pull all the entries from both places and um, you can do that whether you're watching live or whether you're watching sometime during the week. So feel free to enter if you would like this fun prize and I will draw the winner next week. And I think that we should get going on our sewing. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, you guys like the tea with B. That's super fun. It's such a cute collection. I'm going to buy some more for myself because I think that I need a tea quilt personally. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so we are going to start sewing our big patchwork stars. And I have done a little bit of prep for you guys, but the first thing we are going to do, uh, we are going to do this a little bit faster than normal because we've done a lot of these similar styles um, methods with these other blocks so we're just doing it on a larger scale so I'm going to show you the first thing that we're going to do is prep our little um, uh, shoe fly I always say churn dash but that's not what they are our little shoe fly blocks which are where okay so I'm going to put you guys on hold one second because I had them all stacked up oh no they're right here I'm sorry now I look like a hobo so these are what we're making these really cute little shoe fly blocks and I'm going to show you how to put these together really quickly so I'm going to switch cameras and um, get the close-up camera here for us and I'll be right back hang on one sec Okay, there we go. We are ready. Except that we're crooked, sorry. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is start with our shoe fly blocks. And you're going to draw a marked line on your background piece, and you're going to place those right sides together with your butterscotch sparkle pieces. And again, if you have enough fabric left over, you can change these up if you want. You could even just do all of them with the gold and then change up the centers if you want. It just depends on how scrappy you would like your quilt. But I think it would be really fun to have, you know, different colors, make it your own. So I'm not going to go ahead and draw on here because I have my little laser, so I'm gonna use that. But if you don't have the little laser, feel free to um, draw your line on. I'm going to turn off my light here because I didn't do that before and it makes a glare okay so I'm gonna just scooch this out of the way sorry so you guys can see what I'm sewing here so I'm just going to sew a diagonal line on these two pieces they're right sides together and then we are going to trim and before I do anything I'm going to thread my needle <laughs> The Crescendo has a really lovely um, automatic threader. So it just does it like magic for me, which is super great. So now we're gonna try this again. There we go. So I'm sewing down the center and what would be my marked line. And um, now I'm going to cut that. And if you are sewing all these at once, definitely, oh, I have a little goof there. Um, definitely chain piece these because it will go much faster and if you're making all of your corners at once you can chain piece them all so then you're making a total of 16 of these little guys so I've placed my um, line right here on the seam and this goes over a quarter of an inch so I'm trimming away this little corner and that gives me a super cute little half square triangle so I'm going to press I have a little folded piece there so I'm just going to press that and I'm pressing towards my print fabric here but if you are using a darker background fabric then you can press towards the darker fabric that's completely up to you so I'm going to lay out my uh, block the way it goes and I have all my other little corners done so I'm kind of showing you here there we go I'm going to lay that out the way it goes and I'm going to place my background pieces in place. 
So we're kind of making, we are, not kind of, making another nine patch. So lots of nine patch makes making up this quilt. I'm just making sure on Facebook I haven't missed something. Jan says she loves the block we are working on today. Yay, Jan, that's so great. And Teresa says that the cluck cluck seam tick can be useful instead of drawing lines. That's great. Okay, and Wendy, <laughs> Wendy's watching on YouTube and she's working and she says she can work from home but listen in the background. Yay, Wendy, that's super fun. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna move this um, because it feels big. So I'm going to take this out of the way. We're going to use this again in a minute, but for now I am going to move this over here. So we are going to assemble the cute little shoe fly block and we're going to do it just like we did with the center of the last week's block which was the shoe fly star this is the same process we are just going to assemble this all at once and we're going to do it with some chain piecing so i'm going to pull you over here and i'm just sewing this top to the top row the center to the left side now I am taking the middle one, the middle row, the left and center pieces, putting those right sides together, sewing down, and then I am going to do the same thing with this last row. So these are our first three, our three rows, and it's the first two pieces in each row. And I didn't cut my thread in between each one. You can see they're all held together. So when I open them up, they are making up the first section of the block. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to place my last column here on top of each row. So I'm going to take my first one together. So while I'm doing this, I would love to know I'm getting ready to start a patriotic quilt which is um, crazy late to be doing the week of 4th of July, but that's okay. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna go rogue. Um, so I would love to know if you do patriotic projects, and if so, what do you like to do? Do you like to do uh, quilts? Do you like to do um, smaller projects like uh, tablecloths or placemats, or do you like to do um, wreaths? So I would love to know what you like to make for the 4th of July if you do anything like that. So I haven't got any patriotic quilts. I felt like that was a really big oversight on my part. <laughs> so I am going to try and rectify it and it's going to happen after the 4th of July, but I will be super prepared for next year. So here's our little block. It looks kind of funny because we haven't sewn our rows together or pressed it, but everything is going to work out perfectly. And all three of our rows are sewn together and they're held together with these little chain piecing threads. So it makes it really easy for us to not flip our block pieces. Now you don't have to do it that way. You can definitely cut your rows apart, do it however works best for you. So I'm gonna take this over here and press and you guys work on answering my question about the patriotic stuff. <laughs> All of my holiday things are in a um, storage unit right now because we are renting and this house is a little smaller than what we had before. So most of our stuff went into storage in my in-laws barn, which was super helpful, but um, I haven't, I'm used to decorating for the holidays and it feels a little weird not to have my patriotic wreath up and things like that so okay so here's our cute little block we are now ready to sew our rows together so I'm just gonna flip this over and we're gonna line up that top row with the middle row and remember because we're pressing our seams opposite each other they nest together really well so you can see with this little piece that on this top row the seams go towards the center on the middle row, they go towards outside from the center, so they just fit together perfectly. And if once you get to where you're doing this a little bit more, you'll be really fast with putting these together. You can pin them in place, but on a smaller block like this, I typically don't. When it comes to sewing our patchwork squares together, I will pull out those pins. But for now, I'm just going to live dangerously, 
and trust that my little chain piecing threads are holding everything in close together so that my block looks okay. <laughs> so let's see what everybody's saying about their patriotic projects. So Valeria likes to do quilts. Is that what you, um, for 4th of July, Valeria? Um, Jennifer's working on a patriotic cross stitch. Oh, that sounds super cute, Jennifer. You should post that in the group. I would love to see that. And Wendy says, any time is a good time to do um, something patriotic. And as a newbie, you would do a table runner. Ooh, that's a great idea. Oh, and Donna just finished, finished making four wreaths for Independence Day. Ooh, look at you, Donna. That's so cute. And Stephanie's got that cute porch swing, so she does pillows. That sounds great. Hey, when we get the house done, I am going to have a front porch, and I'm very excited about that. And um, we are going to, I'm trying to decide what I want to put out there for furniture, but I feel like I want to swing. I don't know. It sounds really perfect. <laughs> okay, so here is my first two rows. I flipped it there. So row one is sewn to row two. We're going to do the exact same thing and put row three up on row two. Again, right sides together and those little chain piecing threads keep everything aligned correctly. And I'm matching up my seams so that it looks pretty. And I need to kind of fiddle with that a little bit. And this is our last little seam for our turn dash. No, shoe fly. You guys, I'm going to do that like eight times. So you just have to bear with me. I mean shoe fly, even though what I'm saying is turn dash. <laughs> okay, so here's our cute little block. And now I'm going to go ahead and press this. And with the magic of timing, I have all the others done. So you don't have to watch me sew through all four of our little shoe fly blocks. Everybody say yay! <laughs> okay, so here they are. We need four of these, one for each corner. So I've got all four of mine done and I'm gonna set these to the side. So now we are going to work on our big star points. And I have a fun little tip for you guys. We need a big piece of our background fabric. I'm just gonna scooch you here. We need a big piece of our background fabric and then um, you're going to need your print. So this is our um, star point fabric if you are using the kit. If you are not, then feel free to have fun with whatever fabrics you would like. I chose to make my star points the same as my border fabric because I like that tie-in, but it would be just as beautiful to change that up and make your star point something different. It would just add to the scrappiness look to the quilt. So feel free to do that. Now, ideally what you would do, or as the instructions are listed, you would draw a diagonal line, which I've got on here, with your marking pen, you can see that. Um, but you can see that I've added a couple extra lines here. Because these are so big, it feels like a little bit of a waste to not use this extra fabric. And you don't have to do it this way you can definitely just trim them off just like we did on the shoe fly blocks but this way I'm going to show you gives us two extra half square triangles per block so yeah per, per section not per block so I've lined up my print fabric with the left side of my background fabric and my first line is going diagonal to diagonal, just like we would normally do. So normally you would draw that line and then you would cut a quarter of an inch away. So you can see here. But I have drawn an extra line. So this is our sewing line. This would normally be our cut line, but there's an extra line here and we are going to make this an additional sewing line. With just a couple extra seams, you can make pretty good size half square triangles with this leftover fabric. So let me show you what I mean. Just like normal, I'm going to sew on this first line, which is the diagonal line from corner to corner. And um, I'm going to sew down that seam. And if you don't want to use the remaining fabric, 
as half square triangle, then you can just trim those pieces off at this point and use them for whatever you would like. There's no judging here. <laughs> but if you would like to have some extra half square triangles, then once you have done your seam, I've done the first seam here. Once you've done that, then flip your project. I like to sew it the alternate direction. You don't have to do that, but I like to. It just feels like it puckers a little bit less. So I am sewing on that third line, and I've just drawn three lines, one in the center, and then the other two are a quarter of an inch apart. So I'll show you with the little cutting mat what I mean. So here we go. Okay, so I have sewn on my main diagonal line and then I have left this line empty and then I've sewn again on my second or the third diagonal line. So I'm going to take my little ruler and my rotary cutter and I'm going to move over because I'm at a weird angle here. And now I'm going to cut on the middle line and this is the line that you would cut on even if you didn't want to make those half square triangles. And I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I don't want to be confusing. <laughs> okay, so now, let's get this little tail here. Okay, so now our block looks just like it would normally. We folded this down, we're gonna press this in place and we have this bonus half square triangle that is huge. So you could combine, you will have a total of one, two, eight per large block. So a total of 16 of these if you do this to all of your large points. This would make a really cute pillow. And if you Google um, half square triangle layouts, they'll give you all kinds of ideas. You can do chevron, you can do stars, you can do all kinds of really fun um, patterns with your half square triangles. So it doesn't have to be you know, boring or anything like that. Oh, it would even be pretty if you just kind of layered them all like, kind of like flying geese or anything like that. So if you would like to save your extra pieces, your ends, go ahead and add that. It doesn't take that much time to add. And then you'll have all these really cute little half square triangles when you're done. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna press this first and I'm pressing towards my print fabric. You can also do this method with the little triangles if you haven't already made your whole quilt. <laughs> um, I know I'm telling you this on the last block, but you can do this with any half square triangle. It doesn't have to be really big. I tend to not save my little tiny pieces if I'm working with a two and a half inch square or something like that. I just don't have the time to piece together that many tiny little pieces. But you could to totally do it that way. I like to do it more with these larger pieces just because if you're, you know, at the end we're going to have 16 of these. It doesn't take that long to sew 16 half square triangles together into like a pillow form. So that's why I usually reserve that for my larger blocks. So I am going to um, go ahead and do the exact same process except that I need to flip my, my block here because of where I drew my lines. So now I'm going to sew on this seam, which is my point to point diagonal, and I'm going to sew on this third line right here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did, just on the right side of our little star point. So this is a really fun method, and I would love to know if you guys have done that already, or if you ever do this with um, mini quilts, we did this on one of my other quilt alongs, and I'm trying to remember, oh, it was the Stars and Windows quilt. We saved our extra uh, triangles, so uh, this is the same principle. And if you didn't sew along with us on the Stars and Windows quilt, you can find those videos in my Facebook group, and in the next month or so, I'm gonna get all the uh, Stars and Windows projects videos and all the singing in the rain videos uploaded to YouTube as well so you'll be able to access them both places. So now I've got my two seams sewn. I'm going to go ahead and trim on that middle marked line 
And here's my little half square triangle, super cute. And here is our star block. So I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, so now you can see how cute this looks. I'm going to press again. And this is just one of our star points. You're making four of these for the large block. So you can kind of see how big already this block is going to be by how big this point is. So I have got my other three already done for us because again, process of time here. So I'm gonna set these to the side as well. And now we're gonna start the center of our block, our patchwork. So it's really easy to do. Um, and I recommend, this is where I have lettered these pieces for you to try and make it as easy as possible to keep track. If you're working with a specific fabric collection, this is even easier. But even if you're not, sometimes it really helps to use these little alphabetties, and I love them. They're, um, I have the pink ones because I love all things pink, <laughs> but they also come in a aqua and a gray, and then you can also get them in different variations. So this is the ABC, so all the ABCs, and then the numbers up to 10. And you can also get double, um, so it says AABB, if you're working with a block that has even more than 26 pieces. So, which I've come up against just a couple times, and I think they were, um, a Lori Holt project that I ran into my double A's and double B's uh, block. So um, I use these all the times in my patterns as far as lettering my pieces to try and make it easy for you. And I do have a link in the description of today's video to use um, if you want to pick up a pair of alphabeties or a set of alphabeties, not a pair. <laughs> oh, most of you guys like to save your triangle pieces. That's super helpful. That's good to know. Jennifer says she saves the extra half square triangles depending upon the size. She uses them on the quilt back pillow or project bag. Love the idea of using them on the quilt back. That is so cute. I love that idea. And then over on YouTube, Marcia says she keeps them. She hasn't done anything with them yet. So great. And Valeria says that she keeps all her half square triangles and makes quilts for her grandkids' doll beds. Okay, Valeria, how adorable is that? I love it. Such a great idea. Oh, yay. Okay, so these are our first, so they're not the first row. I'm actually going to sew together row six. So if you're wondering what this group of letters is, in the instructions, I'm sewing row six of our patchwork because I have already prepped some of the others and I'll show you guys this in a minute. So we're just gonna sew them together. I'm starting with a J block and in your pattern, it tells you what colors to use where. So I'm putting J and K together and I'm going to sew these. Let me get you a little closer here, sorry. You can holler at me. Beth, move the camera. Mm. I think maybe I need three cameras, one a work camera, one a sewing machine camera, and then one a, a, a face camera. <laughs> okay, so now I am sewing the first two together in row six. When I did my other one, my main one that I just showed you, I did p uh, chain piece these together, so I did row one, two, five, and six all at the same time, but we're going to do that a little bit different because of the um, I prepped some of the others. So now I'm adding in a C block and I'm just opening these up and adding them on the side, just like the pattern um, image shows. I have a confession to make you guys. Somebody on YouTube, which was fine, I don't mind um, comments like this on YouTube, but that they said that I say um a lot. And now I'm totally self-conscious and I didn't even think anything of it, but now I've caught myself saying it like, 80 billion times in this video and so I'm throwing myself off. So if you wonder why I keep stumbling over what I'm saying, it's because I apparently I'm saying um a lot. So I apologize for that. I will work on it. I um, didn't realize that I was quite so ummy. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my J, K, C, and J blocks together and I'm going to add in another K and it just makes this cute patchworky little row. And again, this is where 
you can change up your prints. You can make yours more patchworky, less patchworky. Oh, we came unthreaded here. One sec. Um, so you can change up these rows based on what you have left in your kit, or if you are using scrappy fabrics at home, you know, you don't have to do it exactly like I have listed here. So I'm adding in this little peacock fan print, and now I have one more to do, and it is a C piece. So these little letters make it really easy to tell what goes where. You can just grab your piece, and then sew it in place. So when I had my, I uh, was doing all this, I had all my letters out here and I was able to really quickly grab all the things that I needed. So now I've sewn this really cute little row together. Isn't that darling? I'm gonna move this back a little bit so you can see. And I'm gonna press. And the pressing instructions tell you which way to press so that as best we can do, these seams nest together. There will be a couple because of the large square in the center that they will face the same way, but that's because with that large square, there's really no getting around that. So this is our row six. So I have sewn together, let me get this for you. I have already sewn together rows one and two, and then I have row five here and then row six. So you can see how it's starting to shape up. These are our top and bottom sections and then I have the middle section to piece together. So I'm gonna do that now. That are little rows and you'll see how cute it is. So we are going to make two little four patch blocks. This is the first one. This is row three and four, the first side, the left side, and now we need to sew together the right side. And then you're also going to need a four and a half inch piece. I think it's that. You'll have to look in your pattern to verify <laughs> for your center. And again, you can change out this fabric for anything else that you have left over of in your kit. Or if you're using something else at home, um, feel free to change that out. So now I'm going to sew and I'm going to take the K and I'm going to place it with the C. So I'm going to place these two together. We're just going to do this just like we did with the other row and um, but we are going to chain piece so I've sewn the first two together and now I'm going to sew the bottom two together only they go like this and I am going to rather than clip my threads I'm going to go ahead and keep sewing to sew this cute little four patch together and that's all the letters we need how fun is that can see how helpful they are okay so now I've sewn did I do that right yes okay so now I've sewn the two top two sections together and the bottom two sections together and they're held together with my little cute um, chain piece thread and now I'm going to press and the pressing instructions are in the pattern for how to keep these as best you can um, so that your seams nest together that really helps when you're sewing so many little squares together to keep your seams lining up so that everything matches up. However, I will say that if you find that your seams are just a little bit off, please don't beat yourself up. <laughs> this is this is a fun hobby. Like, for the most part, none of us are doing this for, well, I'm doing it for a job, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, this is meant to be fun and relaxing. So if your seams aren't perfectly nested together or your squares are just a little bit off, I promise you that by the time that you get this quilted and cuddled up under, no one is going to notice that your, you know, four of your little half square, you know, <laughs> little two and a half inch squares are slightly off. So just give yourself some grace. <laughs> There's my spiel. So, okay, now we have our little four patch and we're going to sew that together. I'm flipping over the top row onto the bottom row and we're going to sew that middle seam together. and then we will press and then we will be ready to assemble the middle of our patchwork so the middle of our patch so you can see how fun and um this little square looks and that my my seam isn't it's pretty close in the center but having those seams nested together 
and having that little thread from our chain piecing hold it together really make it so that it is pretty easy to line those up. So I'm going to press this and I'm pressing down. So how are we doing on time? Are we okay? We're running a little slow here. So now I'm going to piece together the middle of my patchwork section with three quick seams. I'm putting the middle part over onto my left four patch. And then I am going to put the right one in place. Whoa, that was quite quick. Mm -hmm. So now we've opened that up super fun and then we're going to place this over here and we're going to sew these together that I'm just a little bit off there all right did you guys has anybody made up their middle of your quilts yet did you have fun with this or did the all the two and a half inch squares drive you crazy I hope they didn't drive you too crazy so now our little middle row is put together um, and we are going to press. And this is where, so you're pressing, let's see, we're pressing towards the, to one side. And we're, again, we're doing our best to line these all up. And now we're going to piece together our patchwork center. So the top two rows I've already sewn together for you. So they're gonna go up here and then the bottom two rows will get placed. So this goes here and this goes here. So you can see how big it is. It doesn't even fit on the screen. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and sew my middle to the top two and then I'm gonna sew these two in place. You'll see that this point right here is where your seams aren't going to nest. You can flip these two if you want to, but you'll have to do it all the way down if you really feel like you need all of those seams to nest together. This is the only place where you'll have a problem and it's not really even a problem. It's just, you know, you'll need an extra pin there or something like that to make sure that those two line up. So I'm going to flip this over. The middle is going onto the top section. And this is where I am going to use my pins because I do have um, so many seams it's just a little bit harder to keep track of. So I'm just going to pin at each seam where they line up and I'm just kind of feeling with my fingers that nesting seam and, and then I'm gonna put a pin in there. So not too many. I don't have those pins that you can sew over. What are those called? I can't remember. Um, but those are I always take these out instead of sewing over them because I've broken enough needles that that is not my favorite thing. Sorry, that was a little scritchy. So now I'm sewing together these two sections and I'm pulling out my pins as I get to each seam. I'm also making sure those seams lay flat because I don't want any bulk. As it is, you're dealing with uh, four pieces of fabric in those seams so you want to try and keep your bulk down as much as possible so I usually run my nail up alongside the seam allowance as it gets close to the presser foot so that it doesn't flip over the other direction when you're sewing up and I'll show you that again so when you're sewing and your seams kind of face inward it's very easy as you're sewing to kind of flip these seams but you don't want to do that. You want to try and keep them laying as flat as possible. Now it happens to the best of us. It, it just does. But if you keep it as flat as possible, that will cut down on the bulk in your seams. So try and do that. So now I have my first two sections, whoops, my first two sections sewn together and my middle section sewn together. So now I'm just going to sew real quick my last two rows in place. And again, I'm just gonna flip this over and put my pins in. Can you guys see okay? Whoop, sorry about that. There, that's maybe a little better. Nope. <laughs> sorry, perspective. It's, uh, the camera is kind of like uh, working in a mirror, so it's, it gets a little bit tricky. So here is where 
I am going to have two seams that go the same direction. So I'm just double checking it before pinning and making sure that it does line up correctly. I like to just do a quick fold over. Okay, yep, that looks good enough for me. <laughs> and put my pin there. And then go ahead and put the last place. You don't need a pin in the center unless you feel like it's just really loose but there's no seam there so I don't I don't pin that second one that middle one so now I'm going to just sew these down and remove those pins let's see what everybody oh Valeria says her thunderstorms are on the way and her poor dogs do your dogs hate it too my dogs really hate thunderstorms they are they're very fierce watchdogs when somebody comes to the door, but if there's thunder outside, my goodness, I, I get very good best friends that kind of lean up against me the whole time. Poor things, our, especially our German Shepherd. She really doesn't like storms. Our, our Golden just kind of goes and hides in the bathroom. She does her like <laughs> um, thunderstorm preventiveness, you know, if there's a tornado watch, how you're supposed to go in the bathroom or hide someplace. She just does that no matter what. So she goes and hides, but um, Alice really likes to just be right with us. So, so I've sewn in the fifth row, and now I am going to sew my sixth row in place, and that will finish off our cute patchwork center of our star. So I'm going to, hey Barbara from Manchester, Tennessee, welcome. So nice you're here. Don likes the two and a half inch squares as a beginner. They are something I can do. Yay, Don, that makes me happy. Glad you aren't frustrated with them. Oh, Valerie, your dog shakes so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. No, no need to worry about that. I wasn't, I wasn't complaining about that comment, you guys. I wasn't trying to be or get attention or anything like that. I probably shouldn't have said anything. I just wanted you to know why I maybe wasn't just kind of stumbling over what I was saying today, but I promise I'm all good. It did not hurt my feelings. Um, I am good with that. So something for me to work on, which I am always happy to find things to work on. My goodness, if we don't, then what are we doing? Okay, so I am sewing this last row. And this will be the center of our patchwork star. And this is a nice big center too. This is the size of all of our other blocks. So that tells you how big we're working with here. So here is our last row. And I have, because this um, fabric does have some directional prints, I have some little threads here, sorry. This does have directional prints. I have made sure that when I'm piecing my blocks together that I am keeping them directional. Now when I'm curled up under this quilt, am I going to care that all of my fans face the same direction? Probably not, but it's just a little habit in me that if I can make it easy to do the directional, I go ahead and do it. So don't feel like you have to. This quilt definitely, as it's pieced together, doesn't have a top or bottom like our next sew along will with the sewing um, Christmas adventure, but I still do. I just like it <laughs> so but if you want to mix and match how your fans are or anything else that's directional feel free to do that so now we're just going to press and because we are almost at an hour I'm going to rather than sew this last part together I'm going to reference you with our last um, video that explains how to do these so I piece this together just like a nine patch so here's each of our corner pieces. Once this is all sewn, see it's upside down. <laughs> Once this is all sewn, we have our our star points and then the middle of our patchwork. So you're going to just lay it out just like we did that shoe fly block in three, you know, nine sections. So you're going to piece it together just like a nine patch. So sew your star point to your corners and then sew your patchwork to your left star points and continue down the block. And then once you have that, then you'll sew your left pieces in place. And no, these are the right pieces. The right pieces in place, and that makes it so that you can put your whole block together. 
So I am going to flip us back to the main camera. Hang on one second. Okay, so here is another look at how that block turns out. So you'll see that the shoe flies are at each corner, the patchworks in the center, and then each star point. And my only other tip for you guys on this block is because you're working with such large pieces, don't think of it as just a block. Think of it like you're almost sewing together, you know, four blocks because it is the size. It's four times the size of our other blocks. So if you need to use pins throughout the process, if you're sewing your star points, you know, and you want to pin those, definitely just give yourself that extra stability of adding those pins in just so everything lays nice and flat. Um, so that would be my only other tip for you guys as far as putting this together. And, and then you will have um, two of these at the end and we are ready to start putting together our quilt top next week so fun i'm really excited this has been such a fun sew along and you guys are always so supportive and kind and i appreciate that don't forget to enter this week's giveaway for the three charm packs of tea with b and the diagonal seam tape and my tea rose quilt pattern i just realized that it's called tea rose so how perfect is that <laughs> maybe i need to buy three more charm packs and make up that quilt in tea rose um, and then I want to let you guys know as a reminder, Christmas Adventure is my next collection and this is kind of a weird year for me. Usually we have about six months in between collections depending upon how often um, designers are all different so they don't always do. But I try and stagger mine so they're about six months apart. But with when Christmas collections are released, that's always in May to give people plenty of time to get their fabric before Christmas. And I love that because I don't really like doing Christmas sewing at Christmas time. Like by the time Christmas time comes around, I want to either be making gifts or I want to just be hanging out and eating cookies and watching It's a Wonderful Life. So if I can do my Christmas sewing in the summer, it feels weird because it's summer, I would much rather do that. So personally, I'm happy about that. I know a lot of people are like, it's not time for Christmas. I'm sorry, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> Christmas Adventure is shipping to stores right now. I have started my shop list for each of my collections. Um, when they first come out, I put together a list of shops that are carrying it. And these are places that either I've searched for or they've let me know that they're carrying it. I, I'm sure that there are some on the list that I haven't found, but this is an easy way to access uh, different shops if you want to buy your fabric online. So we are going to start a Christmas adventure row quilt sew along at the end of July. It kicks off on July 26th. I am making this up in Christmas adventure fabric, but you can use any fabric you would like. And we are going to do a row each week. Um, so the first row will be stars, then holly, then hearts. You can see the schedule as it goes down. I have a post linked in the description of today's video for info on this and if you check the um, Christmas Adventure shop list which is also linked in the description of today's video then you can find shops I'm putting shops on there that are kitting up the quilt kit if you want to make it up in Christmas Adventure I don't have a quilt kit from Riley Blake that comes in a keepsake box for this collection but there are several shops that are kitting it up as they are so um, you can check that list I know fat quarter shop has it and they are also doing backing fabrics but there are several other shops on the list that are kidding it up as well if you want to make it up in Christmas adventure but again don't feel like you have to um, you can use any fabric you like and these quilt patterns are releasing at the beginning of next week so that's really exciting I have three new quilt patterns that are coming out for um, Christmas adventure one is the Christmas adventure row quilt then I have a wreath quilt, which is called the Holly Jolly Wreath Quilt, but you guys, I can't wait to make it up in other fabrics. I wanna make a Halloween version, I wanna make a patriotic version, all the things. And that quilt comes with a free bonus pillow pattern. So a way to take the quilt, the block that's the wreath block, and turn it into a pillow. 
And then there is a third one called the Starry Snow Globe, and it is kind of an Irish chain slash star quilt slash snow globe quilt. Which sounds complicated, but it's really cute and scrappy looking. So I can't wait for you guys to see those. And I think that's everything I have to say. So I um, will be back next Monday with um, our piecing together of our quilt top. And next week I'm going to do a bonus video on, not on Monday, but I'm thinking Wednesday around this same time. I want to show you guys a couple new collections that are coming out that aren't mine um, and then a few other things that are new and exciting. And I know you guys love sneak peeks at new fabric. So I will um, let you know when that video is and I will be streaming that to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. You guys are the best. Seriously. Love our group. Love our community on face on YouTube and in Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit that like button. Don't forget to leave comments. And you can subscribe for notifications so that you don't miss any videos. And if you're in the Facebook group, you can also do that. There's a way to turn on all notifications for the group so that you don't miss any of that. And I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week. See ya.